Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the first of two, or three actually, probably, Savalish boxes. Wolfgang Savalish. Now, this is his Deca box, which actually consists mostly of stuff that was on Philips. And there is going to be a Warner EMI box of orchestral and other stuff, and I think choral music, and then probably an opera box to follow. Because, you know, first and foremost, Savalish was a man of the theater. He was a very, very good opera conductor because he was incredibly reliable and sympathetic to his singers, and he knew how to keep the music moving. Those are important qualities. And he also wasn't um, one of those, uh, well, what you might call regie conductors, regie dirigenten, or something like that in German. You know, one of those guys who want to impose bizarre ideas on a work. That wasn't him at all. In fact, Astrid Varnay in her memoirs describes him basically as imperturbable. He never raised his voice. He never got upset. You know, he almost never had any reaction to anything. And you really get that sense when you listen to his interpretations of symphonic works. Because the truth of the matter is, let's just talk, folks, that great symphonic writing really depends on the conductor's ability to project perturbation. You need to be perturbed. The music is often perturbed. And if you're completely unflappable, most of your symphonic conducting is going to be pretty dull. And that was true of him. Let's be honest. That's the truth. So we're going to go through this. Um, but he had many other gifts. He had compensating gifts. But, you know, because he was who he was, um, he was a major figure. He got to do sort of a lot of what he wanted. He was best at imperturbable music, like, you know, Bruckner's fifth and first. He did marvelously. But anyway, this thing is very loose. So we have to be careful so we don't have a disaster when we take it out of its thingy here. And we have 43 CDs and a booklet. And they're nicely packaged. They are indeed. Uh, we have the, the book here. And the book contains track listings. Okay. All right. So we can do track listings. One of the other problems he had, by the way, was that he worked for most of his career in the symphonic repertoire, anyway, with the Wiener Symphoniker, a really second-rate orchestra. I mean, he conducted them. He got them to play. It fascinates me that you can have the Vienna Philharmonic, which is, which is the opera orchestra, and which also gives concerts, and it consists of just an enormous pool of players from whom uh, they can draw for whatever occasion demands. But, you know, it's amazing that they can have this amazing orchestra, the Vienna Philharmonic, and then when you get to the actual Metropolitan Symphony of the City of Vienna, the Wiener Symphoniker, they're really, ugh, you know, they really were. Um, and I think I think it's because um, the Vienna Philharmonic had to play theatrical music, which has all kinds of crazy orchestration and special effects and excesses of passion and whatnot, whereas the symphony... Um, you know, it was much more limited in what it chose to do, being the Vienna Symphony. I mean, you know, if you do nothing but like, you know, Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, and Strauss waltzes your whole life, then you're not going to be that thrilling as often as not. And you may have trouble when you do bigger works. So I don't know if that's the reason. All I could say is that they were always second rate, and they're second rate when he conducts them. Not he does it badly. They just are, you know. Let's 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 go through this and we'll see where we are where, where we shake down. First, we have Beethoven, the Pastoral Symphony, um, with the uh, Fidelio Overture and the Concertgebouw Orchestra. Well, that's nice. This is from nineteen. Oh, good lord! Wait a minute. Nineteen. It's from nineteen sixty. Recorded in 1960. This was at a period of transition for the Kazerkabau. And so, you know, Jochum was there and Heitink was starting and they were looking for a new music director. Von Bynum had died. Um, and we have, so we have Beethoven's Pastoral, Fidelio Overture, King Stefan Overture, and Seventh. These aren't terrible. They're not terrible at all. They're, they're, they're much better than his later Kazerkabau Beethoven cycle. I'll tell you that. So, I mean, that's the first couple of distance. Symphony... Symphonies one and oh Brahms the Brahms cycle, with the the Wiener Symphoniker. I think, does it even say, Brahms Concertgebouw Orchestra with one and two, and here there is nothing on the bottom. 
I'm pretty sure it was it was the Wiener Symphoniker. Well, let's take a look at CDs three and four. Um, I love it when they have wonderful documentation that makes all of our lives so much easier. All right, here it is. Uh, Wiener Symphoniker, the Vienna Symphony Orchestra. It's Brahms. It's boring. I'm sorry. It's just boring. You know, it, he doesn't blow the third. He's very consistent. Everything, you know, it's it's what you might expect, but it just has no personality at all. It's okay. Same thing with the German Requiem, frankly. I mean, it's not a bad German Requiem. It's with Wilma Lipp and Franz Kras with the Zingverein der Gesellschaft der Musikfreunde in Wien. Yeah. In other words, it's a chorus. And, and he's a very good choral conductor, and he's a very good sacred music conductor, too. So this is a good, reliable German Requiem with, with no outstanding qualities. Uh, and then we've got the Academic Festival, the Tragic Overture, the Schicksal's Lead, the Alto Rhapsody with, with Afia Heines. Oh, she's very good. She's a very, very good singer. The And the uh, 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 very Haydn Variations, which are now called the St. Anthony Variations. Okay, all with the Wiener Symphoniker, and this is all just eh. Haydn, the Surprise in Military Symphonies, also with the Wiener Symphoniker, eh. What can I tell you? Haydn, Oxford, and Schubert number number one with the Wiener Symphoniker, double eh. Uh, let's see, Haydn, Clock, Schubert five, Wiener Symphoniker, Schubert Unfinished, Mendelssohn four, Wiener Symphoniker. Schubert 9, Wiener Symphoniker, all of it just ordinary. Uh, that's the truth. It's just ordinary. Then we've got Mendelssohn, uh, the Mendelssohn cycle without the Wiener Symphoniker. This is with the New Philharmonia, and it's it's his best symphony cycle of all of these various composers. It's a good, enjoyable Mendelssohn cycle, always was, um, and probably because he's got the Philharmonia, an orchestra that has a little bit more pizzazz. Um, you know, the, the performances are basically similar, and and they're good. I mean, it's nice. Uh, what else have we got? Elijah sung Auf Deutsch, an oratorio in two parts. Yes, it's in it's in German, um, and it's with the Leipzig Radio Choir, which is fabulous, the Gewandhaus Orchestra, which is wonderful. It's Mendelssohn's hometown team. And the soloists include Ellie Ameling and, let's see, Renata Kramer, Annalisa Burmeister, Gisela Schritter, Peter Schreier, Hans Joachim Rutsch, Theo Adam. It's, it's, it's a nice performance. I can't argue with that. Um, you know, and of course, again, he's got the better orchestra and all that. Let's see, Schubert, Mass Numbers 5 and 6. Now, he, he redid this stuff, if I'm not mistaken, for, for Warner. Um, and these were pieces that he did very well and that he knew well and conducted very heartfeltly. And they're herzlichly. Uh, let's see, Helen Donat, Ingeborg Springer, Peter Schreier, Hans Joachim Rutsch, Theo Adam, and again, the Leipzig Radio Chorus, the Staatskapelle Dresden. I mean, you know, that's, that's what he needed because he wasn't going to inject gouts of personality coming from himself. What he was going to do is work as a colleague and get everybody to give of their best. And if it was like the Staatskapelle Dresden and the Leipzig Radio Choir, you're going to get good results. It was that simple. It really was. Then we've got more Schubert. So, uh, the Schubert cycle. So if he's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, with the Staatskapelle Dresden. Yes, it's a very nice Schubert cycle, as you might expect. It's always lovely to hear that orchestra. But of course, you could also get a wonderful Schubert cycle with the Staatskapelle Dresden with Herbert Blomstedt which I think is even more perky than this one. Um, you know, it's a little bit better, but still, it's, it's, it's quite good. So that's nice. Then we've got, oh, the oh, typical Johann Strauss discs of all that stuff with the Wiener Symphoniker. And, you know, it's Wiener Symphoniker doing Johann Strauss. It sounds Wienerish. Um, that's fine. Tchaikovsky 5 with Kutzerkebau. Uh, it, it's nothing happening. <laughs> Sorry. Bartok, Bluebeard's Castle. This is the Deutsche Grammophon recording with Julia Varady and Fischer Dieskal with the Bavarian State Orchestra. Um, I, I, it's, it's a fairly tame performance of that as well, partly because Fischer Dieskal is not the best Bluebeard. Uh, you know, it's, he doesn't have the voice for it. And, and Julia Varady's okay as Judith. I, there are, it's not, we're not talking about like Kertes with Ludwig and Barry, for example, which is amazing and versions like that. Then we've got overtures, Otto Nikolai and Albert Lortzing and Muscogny, opera intermezzi with the Bamberg Symphony 
and the Bavarian Staatsphilharmonie and, and Wagner, Wagner bits with the Wiener Symphoniker, which are Wagner and bit-like. Again, decent, but no one's writing home about it at all. Then we've got complete operas. Now, here we've got some more interesting stuff. You've got the Flying Dutchman with Anya Cilia as, as Senta, and, and the Dutchman is Franz Cross and Joseph Greidel. These are all Bayreuth Festival recordings and they're and they're good. I mean they were in that big Bayreuth Festival box. They're they're fun and and enjoyable. So that Dutchman is okay. Celia's always it's good to have her Bayreuth recordings. She was a, a great singer in her day. Um and then we've got Tannhäuser, uh, which is got, let's see, who's Joseph Grindel and Tannhäuser is Wolfgang Vingassen and and Wolfram is Eberhard Vechter and Gerhard Stoltz is is Walter von der Vogelweide. And let's see who else. Where are the where are the ladies? And Elizabeth, of course, is Anya Celia. Venus is Grace Bumbry. Um, you know, it's it, it's the mixed version of Tannhäuser, which is good. We like we like mixed mix, mixes are nice, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't really care for Tannhäuser, so I'm not the best judge of it. But I, my favorite Tannhäuser is still the Schulte recording, because you've got like it's the Paris version, and and it's got wonderful singing, and that's fine. Then there's this really good Lohengrin. This is a good one. You've got Jess Thomas as Lohengrin, who of course is a famous, famous, famous Lohengrin. He was also Lohengrin for Kempe in his classic Lohengrin you know, recording. And Anya Cilia is Elsa, and Astrid Varnay is Ortrude. Yay! Astrid Varnay was a great Ortrude, and she did it throughout the 50s um, and into the 60s, because this is a 60s. This is uh, Bayreuth 1962, it looks like they're saying here in teeny, 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 tiny type. And let's see, Tel Telramund is Ramon Vinay, who's very, very good. And it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good Lohengrin. It really is. You always want, um, I mean, for the singing, Savalish to perk up a little bit. I, I, I can't help saying that. It's just the, the, the reality. Now, for the rest of this, we're on disc 38. We have Savalish as accompanist. And here he really comes into his own because he's a very fine piano accompanist, a very good pianist. You've got a delicious performance of the Brahms Liebeslieder and Neue Liebeslieder waltzes with Edith Mathis, Brigitte Fassbender, Peter Schreier, Fischer Dieskau with Carl Engel and Savalish at the piano. Is it going to be any better than that? Don't count on it. And then you've got Schubert's Winterreise with Hermann Pry, which I love because I like Pry better than Fischer Dieskau generally. Um, Brahms and Prokofiev and Schumann's Dichterliebe um, with Peter Schreier. And, you know, Savalish at the piano. Um, Richard Strauss songs with Hermann Pry, which is just wonderful. Uh, and, you know, the song for, for male voice, which songs for male voice, which are very rare. I mean, people don't play them. More Richard Strauss with Fischer D. Scow. And let's see, when it's TD's 42 and 43, it's, it doesn't, what does it tell us for 42 and 4, oh, 42 continued. Oh, the 42 and 43, this is all the Fischer D. Scow Strauss stuff. And that's it. I mean, for his for his choral conducting, for his his operas, and for his piano accompanying stuff, this is worth having if you're looking for those things. For his symphonic stuff, especially with the Vienna Symphony, um, it's just not special. The Mendelssohn cycle is decent. It's got the New Philharmonia. The Schubert cycle is decent with the Staatskapelle Dresden, and and the rest of it, um, well. Like I said, you can do better, and I, I, that's just the way he was. He wasn't a thriller. He just wasn't. So, um, you know, it's nice to have this. You can decide just how important it is to you. You know, there's better versions of just about everything in here, um, except for the leader, leader recitals. That's the bottom line. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.